Hello Transformation, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do a reaction to a documentary that just recently came out. Um, it's about the young actress. Her name was Heather. I can't pronounce her last name right, but you guys probably know who she is. She is uh, mostly known for her famous role in the Polar Guys film. And um, I'm going to show you guys what had really happened to her. So let's get into it who lost her life at the age of 12. Now, Heather was born on December 27th in 1975. Heather got into the acting business at a young age because her sister, who was four years older than her, was already an actress. Heather went on to star in two Poltergeist sequels. In 1987, she filmed Poltergeist 3 in Chicago, wrapping up her time on set that June. She was looking forward to the film's release, telling people at the time, this one is really good. I think it's the best. But unfortunately, for little old Heather, she never got to see the premiere of Poltergeist 3. So the 1980s classic became known as Hollywood's most cursed film following the 12-year-old actress's death. There's been superstition following the movie because there's been a handful of mysterious cast deaths. So when it came back in 2015, actors were hesitant to go on to this film because so many other actors have passed away in bizarre ways. The poltergeist curse came about after four of the cast members died of mysterious circumstances. The most shocking being of that of Heather O'Rourke who was 12 years old at the time, and she played Carol Ann in all three films. Let me give you guys some context about the Poltergeist movies if you haven't seen them before. Set in a house built on ancient Native American burial grounds, the original Poltergeist trilogy told the terrifying story of the Freeling family and their encounters with the supernatural. Many believe the Poltergeist curse began the same year the first movie was released. But it wasn't until the third movie came around where people really believed there was a curse here because of how Heather passed away. She was a fan favorite mm -hmm. in the films and there was a line she was known for where she says, they're here in a creepy way. Let's talk about how Heather O'Rourke passed away. In 1988, she died from a bowel obstruction that her doctors had previously dismissed as Crohn's disease. Her cause of death was listed as intestinal stenosis, a congenital condition that had gone undetected since her birth. She died on the operating table at the Children's Hospital of San Diego while surgeons attempted to remove a severe bowel obstruction, which caused septic shock. Oh, that sounds so painful. Like, uh, I just like anyone who goes through this, I just uh, sending good vibes to you because that sounds really, really terrible. Her mother said it was intestinal blockage that had probably been present since birth. She continued, the x-rays taken, if read properly, would have disclosed that this was the kind of condition that should have been treated surgically. Unfortunately, Heather's doctors had misdiagnosed her a year prior, an oversight that cost the young girl her life. In January 1987, Heather began showing signs of illness. It started out small. She felt nauseous at home with her family. Her family took her to the hospital about three or four times that month and they kept telling her that she had the flu. She had a parasite and she was in Kaiser Hospital for several tests and before they even admitted her they said she just had the flu but she was sick for a month mm. and then they found she had a parasite and at that point after that she had gone back in they said she had Crohn's and so we just accepted it and then she was on cortisone. Crohn's was how they diagnosed it? Yes the it was and uh, she was on cortisone all this time and you'll see in Poltergeist 3 her kind of heavy chipmunk cheeks which she didn't like how that looked you know. Swelled her up a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. Now, you have your lawyer with you, yes. Andy Gage. Um, your position is that there was a, a bad diagnosis and the problem could have been... Yes, it could have been avoided. The, the diagnosis was really one of uh, an inflammation of the bowel. Crohn's is an intense disease. It's like an autoimmune disease. And I actually know people who have had or who have this. I don't think it necessarily goes away. And it's not easy to live with when you have a flare-up. But once Heather's feet began to swell, it was clear that she was not suffering from a simple virus. Eventually, doctors discovered that she had a parasitic infection that was caused by well water at their home. They prescribed her medication to kill this parasite, which also sounds terrible, and supposedly it worked. At least they thought so, but Kathleen wanted to be sure, so they gave her a follow-up visit before the Poltergeist 3 began. Kathleen, Heather's mother, wanted to be sure that she was okay, so she took her to the doctors one more time before they began production for Poltergeist 3. She said they did an x-ray after giving her this chalky white 
herbarium stuff to drink. And they found that the parasite was cleared up, but there was still kind of like some inflammation. They called what they saw Crohn's and they put her on cortisone and sulfa. Now everything was all right. It wasn't perfect, but it was all right until Heather got sick again. It was January 31st, 1988, when Heather came down with flu-like symptoms, she began vomiting and had abdominal pain. The next day, her fingers and toes started turning blue and her stomach looked swollen. On the morning of February 1st, she collapsed and her parents immediately called 911. It took EMTs only 10 minutes to get Heather to the hospital, but by that time, she was going into cardiac arrest at 12 years old, which must have been really tragic for her and her parents to watch their young daughter in so much pain and no one can figure out what's wrong. While there were some flu symptoms and some swelling, everything was treated fairly carefully and all of a sudden on February the 1st, what happened? Um, on February 1st, she had been sick um, for a year. And on Super Bowl Sunday, we were watching the football game and um, she started to throw up. And about every two hours, things would come back up again, so we gave her Gatorade. And, um, Gatorade is what the doctor told yes, us. Yes, they suggested that because it does have protein and it's better than the flat coke. And um, the next morning we woke up and she said she was going to school. I said, you can't go to school because you haven't eaten anything. She said, well, how about some toast? So I made her some toast and I sat down by her on the couch and she said she couldn't swallow. Well, at that point, I noticed her fingers were blue and her toes were blue and she started to breathe real heavy. And um, I immediately went to the phone and just called the local clinic nearby. And um, I said, bring her right in. It was in a matter of 20, 30 seconds. She went to get dressed and she fell on the floor. Despite going into cardiac arrest, Heather was able wow. to be revived on the operating table where they mm. realized what was really going on with her. They were able to correct it, but unfortunately it was too late because her body had gone into septic shock, which is so scary to me. Um, I don't know much about like medical conditions, but like, is it septic shock when your body's like kind of like poisoned itself? Like your blood is almost like toxic. Like, again, I don't know. So comment below. I know you're going to correct me, but her heart stopped beating once again on the operating table and this time doctors weren't able to bring her back in the wake of her daughter's death kathleen filed a wrongful death lawsuit against her doctors she felt like this could have been prevented she was taking her daughter to the doctor so often so she doesn't understand why they couldn't figure this out and it's just a really unfortunate situation you're suing because you are not satisfied that what happened uh, could, that maybe could, it might not have happened right on that day they tried some measures uh, to uh, bring her back and they did a surgery which uh, demonstrated that there had been an erroneous diagnosis that it was a blocked intestine and it's, uh, it's pretty clear that that surgery could have been done and should have been done almost a year sooner and if that had occurred that simple procedure would have saved her life. Well we did uh, talk to the Permanente Medical Group uh, part of Kaiser and they produced a statement to us which says this is a very tragic case for all concerned it's also extremely a, extremely complex case complicated by a number of factors not given to simple answers we have reviewed the case extensively we are confident that the course of action taken by our doctors was entirely appropriate that's their statement. Heather's family believe that her death could have been avoided if the doctors had diagnosed her correctly, which I feel like this probably happens way more often than we talk about, yes, where doctors is. misdiagnose people, they don't get better, they get sicker. Yeah, it's always doctors good to get a sick could, opinion. You know, I love doctors. We stand doctors on this channel, but, you know, doctors are people too, kind of like police are. You know, there are good ones, there are bad ones. So um, I feel like, uh, yeah. This happens and um, it's sad and scary because it's like you never know when your body's going to go into something or have a reaction and you don't know how to fix so much. So, yeah, Kathleen argued that this could have been avoided, so she wanted to sue them for it. Either way, it wasn't going to bring Heather back. One person was quoted saying Heather was just a sweetheart and shy and beautiful. She was just this wonderful little girl and she was perfect for the role. She was so sweet and easy to work with and she just took my hand the first day and held on to me for the rest of the time. And if I would cry, she would cry. If I would scream, she would scream. Here's this five-year-old girl who had this innate empathy. She was truly a gifted little actress. Unlike her character, Heather O'Rourke wasn't phased by the movie's eerie plot. If I cried in a scene, she would cry. If I seemed scared in a scene, she would totally take her cue off me and she would become scared. To the point where I began to get worried and I said, you know, Heather, I'm just acting. She said, I know, so am I. <laughs> I went, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just back off. 
everyone who worked with Heather enjoyed her. She was a sweet little actress who knew what she was doing, and she never complained. But I want to talk a little bit more about these movies. So there are some theories that this movie, Poltergeist, is cursed. There are some creepy things that happened during filming. Steven Spielberg used real dead bodies, mm. and more than one actor passed wow. away. People actually link this curse to Heather's death, even though it's very, like medical they still believe that maybe like the curse or something along those lines is what led to her actually passing and like when it comes to native americans and all of that i do not like messing with it like they should have their land we need to respect them we love our native american people so uh I, like films like this they really just get to me even the remake has had some paranormal activity according to people who worked on set but uh, original stars like dominique is an actress who was on the film and uh, she also experienced some paranormal things as life on set became more difficult life at home became more bizarre dominique had a weird experience while she was making the movie you know soon after the production started on the film she was staying in the house a bookshelf falls over throws books all over the room that was bolted into the wall i was living in an apartment in l.a because i was from new york and i would come home every evening and the pictures in the apartment would be crooked and I would straighten them and I would go to bed and I'd get up really early and go to work the next day and I'd come home late at night after a long exhausting day and the pictures would be crooked again and I began to get very creeped out about this I began to think is somebody trying to send me a message that I shouldn't be doing this film that is so creepy to think about I'm over here like checking my plaques <laughs> like are we okay everything's okay. straight right I don't want anything turned crooked Joe Beth Williams an actress in the film was quoted saying I always assumed that the skeletons were made by the prop department I this a article. few years later I ran into one of the special effects guys and I said you guys making all those skeletons that must have been really amazing and he said oh we didn't make them those were real they were real skeletons that these people were playing around with and acting with which i feel like that's against some laws like aren't there laws that protect like the remains i don't i don't know i listened to too many crime podcasts joy beth said i don't know where they bought them from but that really grossed me out i'm glad i didn't know that then because i would have been screaming a lot for real Oh, no. That scene me. is so disgusting, and she agrees. She said it was really awful. First of all, they made the mud with peat, and peat begins to really stink after about a day. It begins to smell like dog poop, so it was really icky to be in, she says. She said I'd have to scream, and I'd think, oh, God, I don't want to get this water in my mouth because I'm sure I'd get a terrible disease. Ew. It seems like the cast didn't have an easy time working with Steven Spielberg. I mean, doing all of these really intense scenes, you would think that maybe the director would help comfort them a little bit. One actor shared that it was terrible on set. They made this tree and put thorns in it. It was crazy. He said it was a rubber tree, but at the same time, you're climbing up there and you're going, why? Why did the tree need to have thorns on it? I mean, couldn't you make it a little bit more comfortable or safe? Joe Beth shared that the poor cameraman had to ride this like ferris wheel device he was strapped in and there were people like helping him and even though he had some assistance he was in a lot of pain and i guess at one point his elbows were bleeding he yelled down to his boss steven telling him that his elbows were bleeding and steven said that's all right we could just wipe off the blood it'll never show so steven never really took them Excuse seriously me, and just me. tried to power through these films i began to get hypersensitive to noises sounds you know jumpy um, lights that see things sort of flash by. And I think people were more susceptible to being creeped out because of the material that we were dealing with. You know, you, when you sort of ha have to put yourself... It has to be difficult to kind of put yourself in that character. And we it see so many people do method acting. I mean, imagine doing method. Very sad to see and hear. And that's why, too, you know, a lot of people are spiritual. A lot of people don't want their children to act in horror films because it's always have a spiritual presence so you know you don't know what's going on but um i really hate that happened to her i know she was in a lot of pain and she was a lot of pain in filming the last movie of that you know her last role um rest in peace to her and um yeah it's very sad very tragic that happened to her but uh coming down Below, tell me what you guys think. Did you guys think it was a spiritual warfare 
or it was just her body just gave out. Uh, comment down below, and if you want to see more of a document documentary of um, tragic, uh, let me know. Subscribe to my channel, and I'm gonna see you guys later. Bye.